Good morning, students. Today, we're going to be talking about geometric sequences. Sequences are just a list of numbers. So right here is a list of numbers, so I put a comma between them. Okay. If it's geometric, it means there's a common ratio between each of the terms, or in other words, there's a common multiplier. So in this particular case, I know that it's geometric because 5 times 3 is 15. 15 times 3. 45 times 3 brings me the next term. The multiplier is the same to get to the very next term. So the sequence is called geometric. Okay. We're going to be jumping to a particular term. That's not necessarily the not necessarily the next term. So we're going to need something called the explicit formula. In the explicit formula, each term is called a1, a2, a3, or the number of the of the place that it is in the term. So the nth term would be called a n. So if you're trying to find the nth term of the sequence, the formula is, it's the first term, which is a one times the common ratio raised to the n minus one. Just remember the common ratio was the number being multiplied to get to the very next term. So if you're trying to get to the nth term, it actually gets multiplied by r one less than the number that you're trying to get to. For example, if I'm trying to get to the third term, I only multiply by r twice. If I'm trying to get to the fifth term, I would need to multiply by r four times. Okay. All right, we'll save this for later. Let's ask a couple questions. Is the sequence geometric? Two, four, six, eight. There's definitely a pattern here. So my question is, is there a common ratio to get to the very next number? Well, if I want to get from the first number to the second number, I could always divide and reverse. 4 divided by 2 will give me the multiplier. 2 times 2 is 4. But however, it is not the same. It's not the same multiplier to get to the next one. Because 4 times 2 would give me 8, not the next term. So therefore, I know this is not geometric. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Here's a sequence, negative 3, negative 15, negative 75, and so forth. Okay, it, from, to get to the first term to the second term, I need to find out what I'm multiplying by. You can always divide in the reverse order. These are all negative numbers. But you're going to notice that the common, the ratio is actually going to be positive. Negative 15 divided by negative 3 gives me a multiplier of 5. Now I can check to see if that is the same multiplier to get to the next term. The second term is negative 15 times 5 again. Does bring me to the next term. Negative 75 times 5 again, negative 375, and so forth. So, yes, this is geometric. The common ratio is the number that I'm multiplying by to get to the very next one. So I'm going to call that R. R equals 5. I'm also going to write down the explicit formula just so you get some practice of that. If I want to jump to any term of this sequence, to jump to the nth term, I simply start at the first term, which I say is negative 3 times the common ratio, which I said was 5, and I raise that to the n minus 1. And that would be the explicit formula for this particular sequence. Okay. Let's take a let's look at examples if they give us the explicit formula. All right, here we have to find the nth term, a sub n, we have negative 3 times 4 to the n minus 1. The first term is the negative 3. And this 4 right here is the common ratio, that is a1 times r to the n minus 1. So I simply just have to multiply by 4 each time to find the next terms. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. 
times 4 again, negative 48, negative 192, negative 768. You might notice that this is, this is very similar to exponential growth. As you can tell, that the explicit formula does have an exponent. Okay, if I want to jump to the eighth term, you could do this two ways. You could simply just continue multiplying by four to get to the eighth term, or you can use the explicit formula. So finding A8 is really negative three times four, but how many times am I multiplying by four? Only seven times, one less, which is N minus one. I can do it in one step in the calculator. This is very helpful if I'm trying to get to some term besides the eighth term, like something really far down the road. Negative three times four raised to the seventh. A very large negative number. Negative 49,152 would be the eighth term on this list. Okay, one last example before you guys can try the assignment. In this particular case, the first term is 100. The common multiplier, the common ratio is a fraction. And you might remember when you're multiplying by a fraction, the numbers are getting smaller each time. It's like an exponential decay problem. So 100 times 1 half. is 50, which is gonna be 25 next. 50 times one half is 25, times 25 again, 12.5, 6.25. If I wanna continue this pattern, I could do so a few more times. I'm gonna try the explicit formula. If I wanna find the eighth term of this list, it's the first term times the common ratio, which I said was one half. You can use 0. 0.5. And I raise that to the n minus one. So in this particular case, I'm raising that one half to the seventh power. Oops, excuse me. 100 times, I'm going to use one half. I have to put that in parentheses. One divided by two raised to the n minus one. If you do, if you do 8 minus 1, that needs to be in parentheses, so I'll just type a 7 right there. Much smaller because it is decaying. 0.78125. Very similar to the exponential unit that we just completed. Okay, guys. Have fun working on that assignment. I hope you guys have a good week. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye now.